let's talk about celestial navigation or how celestial navigation works. Every star in our flat celestial plane has a position relating to our flat plane Earth. Well, it will be 90 degrees. And that is what we call the geographical position. When we, for example, as an observer, is at the geographical position of the star, it always appears 90 degrees above our head. And it all works using a sextant to measure the exact angle of the star and using its relative geographical position just to know where you are located. Again, measuring angles only works on a flat plane Earth. So if there is another observer on the other side, measures 30 degrees exactly to a star and same with the another side, 30 degrees. So therefore, I conclude that both sides are on what we call a circle of equal altitude. Everything on that circle of equal altitude is exactly that measure. Wherever you are in that circle, you will measure 30 degrees, but is even relative to our horizon. So it's absolutely flat and level. Again, celestial navigation only works on a flat plain Earth. The moon, according to CNSA, is a rock. And according to NASA, it is a concrete. But in reality, moon is a cosmic plasma because both rock and concrete doesn't reflect light, but plasma does. All of the moon landing that has been shown on TV and sometimes people use it at school are all CGI with the same fake Earth picture from 1969. Crop that shit out and just copy paste. And that includes the outer space too. The Mars, the rocks, the planets, the satellite and rockets penetrating the firmament are all CGI because all of them use the satellites and not outside space satellites. And that includes the Starlink of Elon. In short, your world that you know are photoshopped. A data visualizer and designer named Robert Simon says that he just re-edit the blue marble. They stage the moon landing on a studio and show you an astronaut flying over outer space with a 360 camera just to justify the curvature of the Earth. Let's talk about comets or shooting stars. Comets or shooting stars with all other transit celestial are all perceived as incendiary combustion that is induced by fumes, which always intermingling with pyrodynamics, usually of our electromagnetic atmosphere that is all generated by the black sun. Now, fumes shine ascend and transverse to a various layers on our atmosphere, a fluorescent-like behavior, or what we call hydrodynamical synthesis of air and fire. And these are all influencing our ethereal processes that usually governs the behavior of the fumes. And the interaction of those elements is what the shooting stars are, a flash perturbation of a photonic light energy that lives and dies and regenerate, the same as anything else in this earth. And this is the concept of fume saturation, like fume descent and fume ignition. As these re-enter on our lower atmospheric region is all central of our understanding on that such events that are all visible mostly at night. And this combustion process is always analogous to the principle of friction. The interaction with these fumes with cooler temperatures or even cooler elemental compositions always leads to a creation of visible fire or what we all call shooting stars. That shooting star you're actually seeing is an end result of a chemical reaction at a macrocosmic scale. And no, these are not explosions or black holes. It is a fumes after ascending through our atmospheric layers and they will all reach to a point of saturation. So as they go down, these fumes or those fumes always undergo a transformative process. And that's due to a frictional interaction, especially with air elements. And these saturated fumes always ignite producing flashes of light. Yeah, I know, we all look at this as entities in the heavens or a divine intelligence. And this process also happens why there is aurora borealis. The ionosphere that we have is the ether that's 50 kilometer to 550 kilometer above Earth, usually composed of metallic amalgam and resonators, which are mostly gold covers. 
that includes antennas and copper coils that is all under arcs and columns with fractal design of our establishments. There's a purpose why ancient and old buildings look alike, like a tower with antennas on top, especially churches, temples, and even mosques, just to maintain the universal force, and all channel it down with the help of the magnetron, especially the ions of the magnetic field that interacts with a stream of microwave waves, usually to the resonator in order to generate high-frequency signal. The coils are the electrical conductors. The archive volts are toroidal vortices. And the resonators, which is covered with copper, the columns, the arcs, are all coils, conducting the currents of positive and negative ions. As we know, music is a liquid architecture, or what we call frozen music which are all cymatic frequency. And even some churches use bells for that. Or just even a speaker for a calling of prayer is all sound vibration. Or even channeling that what we call the human vowels. As we all know, above and below are all waters. When God says, let there be light, there was light. And all shone the stars this way. All are cymatics. Water with light looks exactly like this. Yes, this is the real photo of stars. It is mostly made out of sounds. Since this is all patterns of vibrations, that's why any sound affects us and sometimes blend with our emotions. Because even the science of cymatics, they demonstrate that even a single tone and manifest conflicts geometrics and even structure in material realm. And all the water has its own memory. The Japanese scientist Dr. Masaru stated that the molecular structure of water can be altered with human intentions and that includes our emotions. They come up with these experiments that using a certain words or even phrases of every droplets of water and then freezing them there's a different crystalline structure. Our bodies are 60 to 70% water, meaning our thoughts can positively, negatively affect the entire system. That's why meditation is so important for everybody. Sea level, not sea curve. Perspective is key. Now, let's look at some examples of how water works. In a container, taking its level. Is this how water works? Or that, or this. No, more like that. Science, pseudoscience. Real science, observable, repeatable, measurable, tangible physical. In its container, seeking its level. Pseudoscience, it's not actually pseudoscience that fails to comply with science. So, you know, there you go. Just a bunch of theories and ideas. NASA is a money laundering scheme um, and the earth is not a globe. If you don't believe me, Go look at the moon landing with a fresh set of eyes. I've said this before and I'll say it again. They landed on the moon in a spaceship made of tin foil. If you still don't believe that NASA is a money laundering scheme and that they're taking all of our tax dollars and paying themselves, lining their pockets, then look at this. NASA's plan to build a train track on the moon that we didn't go to it is part of the agency's Innovative Advanced Concepts Program, which aims to develop science fiction-like projects for future space exploration. Does a levitating robot train on the moon sound far-fetched? Well, it doesn't sound so far-fetched when the politicians need fucking money in their pockets. As our veterans sit homeless on the streets with nobody to help them out. With Americans not being able to feed their children because they can't afford a carton of eggs for $10. People's rent doubled. People's homes are getting taken over because they can't make their mortgage payment. But a train on the moon, a train on the moon that we have never even landed on. 
sounds completely f***ing feasible right now, now doesn't it? Hi, so today I want to talk about moon. So the moon is very, very bright, isn't it? And they tell us that there are six flags on the moon from the USA and that they're going to build a train on the moon and that Japan's been to the moon, China's been to the moon, India's been to the moon, that the moon is 238,000 miles away from us and that the only reason why we can never see the backside of the moon is because, you know, it's revolving around the earth just so perfectly, right? But I have questions. Let's get a little bit closer, shall we? There, that's better. If the moon is 238,000 miles away from us, how come we can zoom in so closely? How come we can never find any of these flags? Where's the proof that we've landed on the moon? And they say that we lost the technology and we can't go back. But how come these other places are going to the moon just fine? They're just coincidentally landing on the back side of the moon. How come the moon always takes on the color of the sky during the day or at night? How come you can see stars through the moon? How come we never see rockets going behind the moon. Look, I'm going to show you. Star through the moon. Here's another one. But isn't the moon a rock floating up there? But countries have flags like that. Actually, lots of countries have flags like that and let's look these that was showing where our flags are and who put the flags on the moon and this is going to show you where the flags are at on the moon but if you ask me that just looks like hollywood all of it and where's the brightness of the moon at this up here looks complete cgi tinfoil PVC pipes and tin foil, all this technology, and they give us tin foil and PVC pipes, umbrellas. You know that thing was like thirty-eight million dollars. More Hollywood. But supposedly we've been to the moon. And all these other countries have been to the moon and NASA is a worldwide organization. How come they don't just set up some sort of video and show us the full earth doing at least a spin? They just give us this garbage and we just believe it. Not we, I don't believe it. But other people do. Oh, let's look at China. Look at, does that not look like CGI cartoons? Like some PlayStation video game? And how come there's no evidence of any other craters hitting the earth? The, I mean the moon? The moon looks literally the same since the beginning of time. So the moon is the same since the beginning of time. It's not changed. We watch the moon during the day. We watch the moon at night. We never see any asteroids hitting the moon, ever. We never see rockets going behind the moon. The moon takes on the color of the sky. You can see things through the moon. So maybe that means that we live in a firmament. You guys ever watch Elon's rockets do this? 
Because it happens all the time. If it doesn't go out to the ocean, to the Bermuda Triangle, it hits the firmament. And if you guys don't know what a firmament is, I suggest you guys do your research and don't use Google for your research because Google is owned by the same people that lied to you about your home. This guy knows all about the firmament. And here he is wearing Baphomet on his chest. And if you zoom in on it, you'll see the upside down crossed right in the center. You want to see his mother? There she is. You want to see another image of her? Zoom in on it. You'll see a face right in the middle. That's his baby's mama. And here she is again, throwing up the signs, wearing babies on her see-through shirt. Lovely. I'm gonna do a whole video on this guy coming up next. But I kind of wanted to stick to Luna because she is up there to tell us what week we're in to keep track of the months. The sky is a perfect clock and calendar made for you and I. And careful how you research because Google is owned by the same people that lied to you. You can't research using YouTube either because it's all controlled. They don't want people knowing the truth about their home. They don't want people knowing the truth about this. They want to continue to feed you guys sci-fi pseudoscience nonsense. When every day we watch the moon, day and night, you zoom in on the moon and there's zero zero evidence that anybody has ever been on the moon. Go look up the videos. Sorry, there are maybe are the videos or images, you know, images are made and produced. Go look up China's and Japan's and India's. I made a video on it a while ago. Go look at their moon landings. And if you can't tell that that's all cartoons, made up from a computer and you're too far gone you can't be awake and not all me people are meant to wake up only some people are meant to see the truth those with eyes to see will see and those with ears to hear will hear it came in the mail and y'all are opening it with me <laughs> Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al Biruni, and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idiot Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.